Well, good afternoon. I am Pilar Escriba, a researcher at Departamento de Prehistoria, Arqueología e Historia Antiga at Universidad de Valencia, Spain. Our research is focused on the origin and evolution of early agricultural societies. Ceramic is a key aspect to our research. Characterization of ceramic has evolved and further aspect, aspects have been added to analysis, to name a few, technology, raw materials, or decoration tools. The ability of these new methods has to be proven. Uh, in the next few minutes, I will show you how we tested our own method to analyze Neolithic cer ceramic from a technological point of view. Uh, well, uh, I hear you and my communication is some different more focused in artifact reporting than selection, but this is when I have, sorry. <laughs> Over the years, handcrafted Neolithic pottery has been studied in a many different ways, trying to solve the complexity of a non-standardized material products as opposed to other subsequent productions like Eva. Uh, we propose a global vision for selection and analysis of this type of material culture where the three main characteristics of a ceramic vessel are include typology, technology, and decoration. Uh, our goal is to define a scientific method focused on technology, thus being rational, analytic, and precise, and verifiable that will enable such integral analysis. Our technological assessment is measured by an index named PTI, or Production Task Index. Method is described by McClure, uh, a former researcher at our working group in 2004. This index evaluates the amount of labor investment. The higher the PTI, the larger labor spent to craft the vessel. Index. Uh, is built by aggregating rates from some production items into one single number known as PTI. Such items are, here you can see the table with the numbers and the items. Okay, Texture, inclusion size, sorting, inclusion frequency, and surface treatment, internal and external. As a result of our experience, we decide that the slip and decoration here, uh, these items were not to be included in our PTI, but assessed and scored separately. Moreover, some other items are evaluated, but not aggregated at our PTI, such as thickness of walls, baking environment, vacuoles, and density, for example. Uh, a brief description and point values are shown for a better understanding. I don't have time, sorry, but uh, if you want something, uh, Barbara has my, my email to questions. Uh, or PTA rates from three here. You can see the fresh cut of the pottery at the very least labor, 226 here is the very most labor. How test our method? Worthiness of our method was tested by comparing two double blind researchers to the same sample of pottery. It would also compare the difference between bare eye or microscopic of observation. All gathered data was converted into quantitative data which enables all kinds of statistical treatment. In addition to the archaeological information provided by the study as such, our working method has been further improved in such a way it is homogeneous, standardized, and reproducible. The sample is obtained from Micena, a third millennium calibrated BC site in Valencia, Spain, with 322 fragments. For this comparison, only fragments 
which were part of a same vessel are eligible. <coughs> that makes a total of different vessels in the sample named MNV here, or minimum number of vessels of 175 mostly undecorated. All these data are collected in a customized database where archaeological heritage useful information is stored. Fragments that cannot be defined at that level will not be compared at PTI calculation. Nevertheless, those fragments are recorded in our database, database as well. These are the main features of site of Mycena. It's a 20,000 square meter open air Neolithic village. A number of negative structures were developed. Uh, silos and pipes where fragments were found. These structures were quickly fulfilled. Mostly materials are in these structures again, and only the material which archaeological info was taken and stored. In this case, only 322 fragments uh, of thousands and thousands found in this site. Well, two researchers separately gauge each fragment and assign point value at each item. Range of point values is shown in brackets here, here, and here. <coughs> Absolute difference per, at, per item was calculated. Out of six items, it was observed that three items show the most similar results. Internal treatment, external treatment, and texture. Blue and yellow areas show absolute difference between researchers one and two of zero and one. Here, zero and one. It's the same color for all the cheese. Uh, it is above 50% of fragments where point value were assigned exactly the same. It's above 95% where difference is zero or one. On the other hand, <laughs> it was also found that absolute difference in a signing point value was significantly different in three items, size, temper, and sorting. Uh, less than 30% is zero difference, and less than 8% is zero or one. Why? Well, uh, you can see this area and this one in red. Okay. Gauging point values in these three last items is based in the predominant amount of particles found in a fresh cut of pottery. This predominant amount of particles might be perceived as particles with larger number here, very little, but a lot of them, or with larger surface in the cut. Here, in the red cycle, we can see these bigger surfaces. Uh, here we is an example of this situation and criteria to identify predominant particles, particles had not been properly set. We can uh, talk about that, but I think the, pro the problem is set criteria uh, between uh, researchers. <coughs> These curves so the amount of vessels with PTI aggregated points per item. The observer one, green line, and observer two, this line. To finish the data processing, we compare the absolute difference results with distance and p-values with Kolmogorov Smirnov test. And results of test are consistent with absolute difference as shown before. We have a distance between both curves of 
0.035 in this test. Uh, then it's fair to say those curves are very much alike, but not enough to be statistically equal. Here with a summary of problems found and how to solve them. Here's the problem about the item and how to solve that. We are quite satisfied. We identified some potentially problems and we found how to solve them. Regarding the temper size and sorting, uh, we found the different criteria to identify predominant particles we have shown again. And uh, how to solve, improve definition of this item, learn by the example with a photo book of ceramics and uh, ceramics uh, complicated, and don't use different tools, bare eye or microscope. Uh, about the temper amount, uh, the point values not properly recorded in database because the database is very complicated. And uh, the solution is uh, easy, adaptation and simplification of databases. And different criteria to identify predominant particles. Uh, we have to set criteria and use a double check technique. Uh, it's uh, regarding two times each number, each uh, word uh, we type in uh, to assure is the correct. Uh, about the treatment, internal and external, uh, when erosion, gauging criteria are not properly defined. And if the, if the pottery is erosion, erosionated, uh, maybe it's better don't make this test. And texture. Uh, about the texture is a problem because when you uh, see the pottery, you cut a little fragment uh, to study, and the the researcher that cut this fragment uh, mm, feels the density of fragment, and the second researcher don't. And maybe only the, the solution we proposed is item to be gauged only by the researcher who actually cut the frame. Conclusions. Well, about our research model, uh, the pros are the method is fully operational, a scientific model. The study of technology improves information of vessels uh, about the production types and operational change and can be better characterized. And the model is especially useful for non-standardized pottery, like prehistoric. But the cons, in the, in the other hand, the time consumption and database complexity are increased. We thought research on different collection has to be comparable. Methods that look comparable and quantitative has to be tested to make sure there really are. And I hope you found this study interesting. And on behalf of our team of Universitat of Valencia, I would like to thank you for your attention and the session and the Congress organizers. Thank you very much.